father by me. If he had known me, he should have known my father also. And from henceforth he know him and have seen him. I rest at the seventh verse, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, will be without him. I 
that we are Lord's servant today. To those that are hurting and grieving, he offers reason to hope. And this is number one reason for hope. A different reaction. Paul specifically addresses those in the church who have lost friends, family, or loved ones. He tells them that we should react differently than those who have no hope. And two things that we should keep in mind. Number one, or A, our mourning is natural. Paul is not saying that we should not be sad when our loved ones die. Remember, it is 76 years seven was with us. So, he was in the flesh. And he would have had relationships with his siblings, his parents first, his siblings, and then his wife and the family. So it is natural for you to mourn. Sometimes people say to you, don't cry. But you have to cry and, and, and express yourself and let it come out, otherwise you will be sick. So it's normal to be sad when our loved ones die. Psalm 116 verses 15 is translated, Precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. The Hebrew word for precious refers to precious stones or possessions. And it can also be translated costly or expensive. So Selwyn was very costly to us. He was dear to us. Why am I speaking like this? I had the privilege to pray for Selwyn and give him a sinner, offer him to say the sinner's prayer and to repent and to give his heart to the Lord. And he was excited to do it. And he received peace in his life. He was a fighter. He did not give up for one moment. Despite the pain and everything that he had, he was there, pressing and persevering. The Lord does his work on earth through his people. So doesn't it make sense that their death is costly? Not only paying him money, I'm speaking about how he was precious to all of us. He knows our loss because he experiences it with us. Do you remember the story about Lazarus' Lazarus' death? Jesus knew that he would raise Lazarus from the dead. But when he saw the sad faces approach the same tomb, and he felt the loss of a loved one. Do you know what Jesus did? Jesus wept. So it's natural to me. We know that departed believers will be resurrected, but being apart from them causes natural pain and grief. Over the last two years, we have seen and lost loved ones. I have lost my niece, who is 46 years, this morning. And it was a shock to us. Can we get accustomed with that? After a year, I have to go to the wake. I can't go and get it. So every day we face death. Every day. This morning, some people didn't open their eyes, like my niece. She did not come into the world. She closed her eyes on the other side. So we have to live our life pleasing to God. We don't know when we leave from here who is next. Are we prepared? Our rejoicing is supernatural. Paul explains that we have to react differently than those who have no hope. Although we mourn and grieve, the Lord is with us straight on. He's always here with us. He has never left us. As believers, we have comfort and hope in the future. We know that our departed loved ones who are fellow believers are now with the Lord. Seven is with the Lord. First Corinthians, second Corinthians, five. Scripture even calls them lesser. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Seven, live three, four, ten, and six. So he's tired. He's resting now from his labor. 
And he's in the happiest place, you know, because we have to get up, we have to wear this, we have to fight against monkeypox and COVID and different natural disasters that we are facing every day with. He's in a better place. We have to make our lives right to meet with him in the great beyond. An important reality is the second point. Paul reminds us that if we believe in the gospel, we also believe in the second coming of Christ. And no topic is more comforting to us in our loss than that of the resurrection. It's a true hope that only we as Christians have. The same thing as Christ causes us to pause in our grief to anticipate the future. And this is what we have to expect. The privilege of the deceased saints. When Christ returns, he will bring the deceased believers with him. And while we greet their loss, surely they rejoice and anticipate the day when they will be the first to see the resurrected Christ return from his people. And the other point is the triumphant return of Jesus Christ. I don't know how many of you believe in the rapture. So we are awaiting that for the Lord to come and take his saints away. We are told that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. When Christ comes for the second time, it will not be in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, announced by a single star to wise men or by an angel to shepherds. But he will come wrapped in glory and splendor with an earth-shaking shout of an archangel and with a trump, the trumpet of God himself. And who will be the first to see these things? The dead in Christ. Then we have the triumphant return, the reunion. After the deceased saints are resurrected to be with Christ in his glory, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will be reunited with our fellow believers whom we have lost and all together we will be united with Christ in all his glory for the rest of eternity. And as I always draw this reference, and I always like to say this, 14th of June 1946 was when Selwyn was born. And between that time, you know, there was a dash in the middle. Do you all know that? Do you all, if you have a program, you will see, or whenever you get a program, you will see 14 June 1946, a dash in the middle, and then 1st August 2022. That's when he expired. That's when he left us. And that will happen to us one of these days if we are not wrapped yet with Christ. Our time will expire. Our time will soon be gone from this earth. How do we live with that dash? What do we do on a daily basis? Are we living for God? Are we seeking Him on a daily basis? When we open our eyes in the morning, I said to the church this morning, when you get up in the morning, hear what you have to do. Don't jump out of the bed. Sit for a little while on your bed, because it is good also for your blood not to rush up to your brain and get a stroke or high blood pressure. But you sit on the bed, and you say, thank you, Jesus. I am alive today. I have seen another day. Thank you. And offer a word of prayer, of thanksgiving to God, because he has called you to see another day. We can't rush off every morning early, thinking as if I woke up myself this morning. No, you did not. Your breath could be taken away. Just like that, COVID came. COVID is here and you have problems breathing. We fight for our bread. So we ought to take life in a different way. In these two years, it has taught us so much. How many of us have learned from these two years how important life is? We 
came together, we became equal in that two years. I said to seven you survive this COVID, you survive this life, and you're a fighter. Today we are naturally grieved. But we also have reason for great comfort. I encourage you to put a bookmark at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And when you feel the deepest pain, you can read this passage. And surely this will engage you in the deepest anticipation of Christ's return. Paul said about these verses, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That is what we are doing here right now. We are comforting one another. We are here with the family to encourage them, to stand with them. Basil Selwyn Lizama will be deeply missed and lovingly remembered as the son of the late Maximo and Veronica Lizama. The husband of Linda Lizama. The father of Ricardo Damian, Josiah, Dexter, and Dara. The father in law of Amina, Amina, Stacy, and Andrew. The grandfather of Jaden, Tion, Ethan, and Amelia. The brother of Angela Torres, Steve Lazama, Kathleen Tanhai, and the late John Lazama and Maria Kelly. Brother in law of Titi. Uncle of Camille, Jason, Jimmy, Sherry, Abigail, and many others. The friend of Sunil, Bobby, Chris, Bal, and many others. Relative of many. If your name was not in this paper, don't be angry with the family. You know, sometimes people get angry and they sort of leave out my name and I do so much and I come and I pray with him and I come and I talk to him and I come and see him and my name is not in that program. Petty. Comfort one another. We are here to encourage them, to, you know, Linda and the rest of them. We don't know what they are going through. We might think we know what they are going through. But the pain is real. Each one of us here today has a choice to make concerning eternity. We can choose to believe in Christ, follow Him as Lord, or we can live for ourselves with no hope and no future. If we choose Jesus, and belief in the gospel of Christ. This gospel tells us that Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead to show us the way to heaven. The second choice is to go on our own way and live as if this life was the only place that matters. Once this choice is made, we will have to live with this decision for all eternity. Remember that being rich doesn't mean you cannot go to heaven. You know some people say if you're rich, you cannot make it to heaven. But I've seen through the two years, with wealth, with, with cars, five cars, and then pack up in, in the garage, and the person died with COVID and go on. Money speaks nothing in this time that we are living in. But that doesn't mean to say that you will not go to heaven. There are some rich people who know Christ. But if we trust in our riches or anything else more than Christ, we may find ourselves in a place of torment for eternity. Our friend Selwyn, in whose honor we gather this day today, has already made his choice. And he made the choice to serve God. God is just and merciful, and only He knows the decision that our friend made. The question to consider today, as we are faced with the reality of life and death, is what choice will you make today? Now unto Him that is able to keep you from the fallen and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty.
dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. And Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. As the word was, was sent forth today, Lord, I pray that your hearts, your people's hearts will be touched, Lord. They will remember even one line from it, Lord. And they will remember that they have to make a choice to serve you, Lord. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, I want to invite Dexter and all to come and do the eulogy for us.
all over the country that guy no two weeks back he went down the Ruga he was in the front seat why we don't pass it to my court he said oh, he will take that away I said that when I go against him that will make him also shorter you know so up to the, up to the last going down the road we go on right on with this, you know. So that's what I say. There's something about that. There's the peace today with the Lord, and I'm going to be pastor saying we all have to make our part straight because we are next. We don't know which one of us can go. But it's our time. But what we have to do is be prepared. Be prepared. Thanks everyone.
what we want to do. We can choose what we want to say, what we want to eat, and all these things. And I thank you for the choice that seven made a couple of years ago to give your life to you, Lord Jesus. So I pray this evening, O God. Lord, your own said Jesus in the book of John, chapter 15. It is expedient that I go. That if I do not go, I would not say I cannot send a comforter. I have to go because I want to send a comforter. This evening I pray for that spirit of comforter, which is a party, to rest upon, Lord, the lives of this family of God. Lord, that we will look at it as sorrow, Lord. Lord, even the pastor mentioned, Lord, of death of our sin, Lord, is precious in the sight of the Lord. And this evening, God, I just want to honor you, Lord. I want to worship you, Lord. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No other God but we worship you, Lord. You are the God who stretched out the heaven like a curtain, your own said, Lord. You count every star in their respective days, the moon and the sun to give us light and day, light and night, Lord. Father, we just want to bless your name this evening, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for holding the well of us, O oh God, as we prepare our little wife, Lord, to put our Lord, to send it, Lord. The old said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We know that life of seven is already in your hand, Lord, and in your care. Right now, this is just a body. The body, Lord, has to go back down where it comes from, Lord. So, Lord, I just want to honor you, Father. Give us a wonderful evening that we look to send out seven this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
men know that this person would have such a great impact on my life. There are many blessed memories that we share, which I will cherish forever. When I was going through a difficult period in my life, I needed support. He was always there for me. Whenever it was day or night, to me, my elder sibling, Sila was like a big brother. Whether we lived, wherever we lived, he would always make time to visit me and make sure that I was comfortable and had sufficient to provide. He would always make sure to visit at Christmas, preferably on Boxing Day, to enjoy the Creole rice and wild meat with a sprinkling of berry. One of his favorite treats was corn pap. Just recently, he told me that when I returned from my vacation to please bring him some corn pap, I wish I had that opportunity to do so. I must thank his wife, Linda, the children, and her daughter-in-law for the dedication they showed to Silo, especially during the last couple of months of his illness, both at home and in the hospital. They were diligent in taking him to the various medical facilities to give to different tests and scans. They also took the time to give me daily updates on his condition. To see you because of your good works and commitment to your family, I know that you have gone to a better place. Start to polish his shoes. <laughs> Say, boss, 
I just took a five days to get this head together. Don't worry, I know you're here. But this guy was awesome. This guy was something else. And I never forget all the challenges that we faced in elevating in those days. He was always there to support us. He was always a team player. And let me tell you something. I don't remember a time when this guy said no. Hey, Lizama, we don't worry about us. I'm taking care of it. Even before you finish speaking, he always has the answer. And I will never miss it yeah. for anything. When Colin called me and told me about this, I was in New York. I said, Colin, I am not missing this for anything. Because this guy would have made my life and the success that I have to do. Because when we took on the elevated challenge, it was new to us. But he was there with us to take and take full 100% support. You understand me? And I just want to say to the family, I know you're grieving. I know where you're at a loss right now. But he's going to his makeup. He's in a better place. And I'm sure at this point in time, he probably gave somebody some instructions or telling somebody, hey, shape up. Elevative officers can tell you about this arm. With a disciplinarian, who makes matters with that. It is not the best thing you want it. So I just want to say, as we have a star, you call him old boy, rest in peace. You're a good man. Good afternoon, everyone. As Mr. Williams said, my name is Colin Harris, and I, we all work together in innovative security for a few years together. Um, I have to start on a more somewhat note because I have to confess that my first interaction with Selwyn was actually had a disagreement. And um, the good thing about it is that both of us would want to get the job done. And, you know, we were in a meeting together trying to resolve all differences. And he treated us with that and said, hey, what? Tomorrow's another day, right? Or today's a new day, right? And that was it. We lay all the differences to rest and we move on. So one thing that I remember about him is that even if you have a disagreement with him, he was willing to let bygones be bygones, look at the bigger picture, and, and get on with the job. And as Mr. Williams, I can, I mean, he was the most supportive, one of the single most supportive persons I've ever worked with. So, you know, we know he will rest in peace. I'm scared that he has a large and loving family. I, my, my, my greetings and condolences to you all, and I really pray that you find comfort. And I want to assure that not only your lives and the lives of those you know, but those we don't know, he was very impactful to those of us who we work with. So thank you, and all the best for you.
myself a body show melda. You make me myself a bloody clown. Oh, I've got the country looking for you.
Or if you want to get swing after the money, I'm going to go to the room and collect it. I'm going to go to the room and collect it. I'm going to go to the room and collect it. I'm going to go to the room and collect it.